All right, folks, Chris Brittle here. I just uh, finished up my very first uh, rope bridge to uh, a building calling the tree house. It's not a tree house, as you can tell, but it's in the trees, and the deck will connect to the trees, and so hopefully we can get away with calling it a tree house. But anyway, the more important part is the, the rope bridge. I saw this on a uh, Airbnb listing, and I really like this design, and um, I found uh, a, a one or two videos out there on how to weave this rope, uh, but uh, I couldn't find them again when I came down to do the project. So I, uh, I wanted to just put something out there that'll maybe help somebody else who's trying to do this kind of a design with uh, both horizontal ropes and then the verticals. Um, so essentially uh, what we're looking at is inch and a half diameter uh, hemp rope, which uh, I purchased uh, online. I'll, I'll post uh, the name of the company that uh, provided the materials. They, they're this not sponsored or anything like that, but they were excellent, had a problem with shipping on those end cups. UPS made a mistake. These guys went out of their way to get these things over to me overnight so I could continue working on the project. So uh, high props for them. I think it's not in rope, but uh, I need to verify that. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna include some pictures for how the design works, but essentially you take the rope, stretch it out, fold it in half so you're holding the, mid, the the midway point so in other words if the rope's 100 feet long you're holding on to the 50 foot section a right point and you weave it over that rope that the bottom wrong so 50 feet of rope is going uh, off of this one line goes up and the other end of the rope goes down and so these ends of ropes are continually just weaving in and out of each other where you end up with is at the very end is the end of the rope on one, on the bottom and then the other end here. I'm going to clean that up, not use duct tape. I'm going to do something different that's more attractive, but that's the way it is right now. The weave, to explain this, is kind of difficult, but I'm just showing you the video uh, and some of the beginnings of how this works. And just take a good close look at that and sort out how that weaves together. Again, too hard to explain, but essentially you're always going to have um, a pattern where the rope is coming from the outside over and down. That's the top rail. So over, it's always going to be that direction. So you can kind of keep track. Now look, here's one where we reversed. We didn't pay close enough attention and we went the opposite way. So these last two ended up going the wrong direction. So can you tell? Not really, but that's just something to try to figure out. And each one has a twist above the, the lower line and below. Um, I don't have these particularly tight, but that's um, essentially what we're looking at. This is about a 10 foot ramp. It took 100 feet of rope uh, for the verticals. So that's a hundred foot long rope to do a 10 foot bridge. If you're doing, you know, obviously you can do the math, but um, 10 to one. 15 foot bridge, 150 feet of rope. And the, the place I mentioned, they sell it, I think up to 200 feet long. So maybe even longer, check with them. But uh, that's what they do is provide rope and cups and all kinds of things. Uh, what else could be helpful? Um, oh, it's pressure treated. This, this is a pretty wide, this is about 43 inches wide. I think it could be much narrower. Uh, uh, probably closer to um, 35 or even 30 inches wide, but um, I wanted to have that kind of look. Anyway, um, see how the, the large inch and a half rope comes from the top, goes through the post, back down, and then reconnects up to the structure. So anyway, I hope this is helpful. Um, I do want to give you some hints now that I think about it. When you're building this, there's a couple of things I learned. One is there is a suspension cable underneath Let's see if I can get you so you can see it. There's a cable that I have down here. It's it's back underneath there. So I have a uh, insulated stainless steel cable that goes the full length. It's rated for about 1,900 pounds. So there's two of those, plenty of rating, and how it connects with uh, eye bolts on this end, and then eye bolts that are connected to the structure. I was very surprised to see that as you start to crank down on those eye bolts to 
get the, the tension I needed for the cable to have the right amount of bow and to be able to support somebody, it will pull two or three two by 12s uh, out of position. Um, it'll bend them. So I have to come back with a post that is used, you probably have seen them used for uh, pushing up joists like in a crawl space or in a, in a, in a garage where you have your joists, floor joists dropping and sinking and you put these underneath and you sc screw them and they will lift the uh, joist. I'm gonna use one of those on a horizontal so that it is pushing off the house and then off of this very large timber that we've uh, constructed that can take that kind of pressure. And that will equalize the pull that the cables are doing by pushing back. That's the way I came up with it. You, you folks may have some better ideas. I'd love to hear it. Um, but that you'll be surprised how much uh, pressure that is and how it will really deform the, the, the structure of the building by uh, tightening down those cables. That was done by um, extending the uh, eye bolt that goes through the structure, leave it loose, make up your cables with uh, as they do with the uh, the kits that come with them from Home Depot and Lowe's, etc., and then just start cranking down on the nut on the back side of the of the joist, and that'll just get your cables tight. There's no need for turnbuckles or anything like that. Uh, any other tips? Uh, yeah, be careful of these holes. You want to make sure that your cable is inside your rope so when you go back and um, install clips or something to hold the cable onto the board see that these will only go up a little bit there's a clip on the bottom i just use an electrical half inch emt um, cup two strap two hole straps there's one right there i think you want to make sure that you're, you don't have a conflict between the cable that's passing underneath and the hole that you're drilling through this is three quarter inch rope that's inch and a half and that is a one inch hole. You wanna make that hole plenty big so that that rope passes through easily. You will be worn out if you have to fight it going through uh, up and down like that. Um, so make sure your cables aren't conflicting with your, where your position of your holes are gonna be. And what else? I think that's about it now. Anyway, if you got any questions, let me know. Hope it's helpful. Take care.